Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Wednesday. It's Daryl here, and this is, I'm very excited about making this video. This was kind of a spur of the moment video. Uh, I want to talk about the building behind me, especially the third floor right there. Um, I was on my way, I was on my bike, it's a beautiful day today, and I was on my way to the library and to go get my rent check. It's always coming up on the first. The months go by so quick. It feels like I just paid the rent. So I'm going to ride my bike. Next stop is the bank. And I was going by this building. I only live a mile or two from, the, from right here right now. I didn't used to. I used to live about 10 miles from here. And this is about recovery. Um, I'm very familiar with the building behind me. I might as well just say the name. This is Bristol Hospital in Bristol, Connecticut. Um, let me start with the building. Uh, I was, that top floor right there is the mental health crisis ward. And if you can see right there, there, that's where we used to go smoke cigarettes. And this whole other part was added on. Uh, I would come here this from 2004, 2005, 2006 at the, the very height of my opiate addiction. Um, I learned about, I actually learned about this place from the heroin dealer I was buying from. Uh, he was dealing ounces every week and he had a huge problem himself and he, he wanted to quit. And uh, he told me about this place, how the food here is incredible. And uh, I ended up coming here. Uh, about every three months, I would just hit bottom. I, I, would, uh, I would owe people money, my house would be torn apart. Uh, usually after a night of smoking, binging on crack, and uh, the, the place would just be torn up, and I, I'd be expecting people to come banging on the door that I owed money, and uh, I was just so sick and tired of living that way every single day, and I would admit myself. I'd come to the emergency room, and uh, at that point, I was suicidal, and I would tell them about my addiction and how I could not possibly... At one time, I actually came here with the note that I had written. I had actually written a suicide note, and uh, they kept me a little extra long that time. And uh, I would stay here for uh, five to seven days, usually. They would step me down with methadone, and by the fifth day, I, I would be free of any drugs and they keep me on that for another couple days and then I had the option they'd usually encourage you to go to a 30 60 or 90 day rehab this is a detox it's called dual diagnosis uh, there was people up there that just had mental health issues there was people up there that just had addiction issues and then there was me dual diagnosis with both and uh, you were encouraged to go to a, a rehab after and I, uh, I was here about a dozen times and maybe once or twice I actually went to a, a 30 or 60 day rehab after and uh, every time I would hit the steps I would they would let me out the door right over there there's a door right over there I every time I left they'd walk me down it was all it's locked once you're in there you're in for good you're on paper and uh, it's pretty hard. By the time you go through the, the legalities, if you want to get out before they, they let you out, uh, it would be five or seven days. Um, it's a locked facility. When you're, I remember a young kid coming in and he had tried to cut his wrists and he came over to us, the older guys watching TV. And he's like, I gotta get out of here. Where's the elevators? You know, where's the, where's the exit? And we started laughing and laughing. It reminds me of the Pink Floyd song, when you come in, there's no way out of here. When you come in, you're in for good. Anyway, like I said, I would have the best intentions here. Uh, and by the time I hit those steps, I, I wouldn't have a plan. I, I, as soon as I hit those steps, about 10 a.m. in the morning, 12 different times I had been here. Every three months, about every three months, I'd, I'd admit myself here again. And uh, I kept failing and failing. As soon as I hit the steps over there, my mind would automatically, I'd say, okay, it's 10 a.m. What do I usually do at 10 a.m.? And I'd start driving home. I'd have my car right here in the parking lot. And, uh, and it would start creeping in. You know, how much, geez, I could probably get some money for my family. You know, I don't have any food in the refrigerator. I've been here for five days. I'll go get some money. You know, I'll go buy some food. And the food turned into drugs, and every single time I failed. And it got to the point where you lose hope. And that's the point of this video is I have been clean and sober now. I know for those of you that have been watching me for a while, it's probably getting old, but I've been clean and sober since October 23rd of 2006. 17 years and coming up on, I believe, on nine months. I don't, I don't have it exactly down. Um, 
let me tell you about a few things. When I, when I was up there, that's my room. That, one of these were my room right there. And I, and I was in that smoking room right there. And I remember looking out here. You know, they, they would, there would be meetings, and you had meetings with counselors throughout the day, and uh, NA meetings, and there was a lot of free time. And uh, I would look out those windows, and I would look out here and see people going about their business, and it was just a whole other world. I, I, I couldn't remember what it was like to actually have a job and, and have family that trusted you and to be able to hold on to money. Um, and now I'm sitting out here. And I'm living the best life. I thought it was. I thought it. I thought I'd never be clean and sober. And then, if I did get clean and sober, I thought it would be so boring. Uh, I couldn't imagine. I couldn't imagine. Especially, I couldn't imagine having a relationship, having sex, uh, without drugs or alcohol. Even so, ever since I was like 14, 15, I was drinking whenever I had relationships. I couldn't imagine any of that. You know, I figured I might as well just die. Um, let me tell you this. It's the best life I have ever lived. Um, the relationships are, are better than I ever could imagine. The good things is having my family back. They trust me now. Um, every week I go out to eat with my mother. And the look on her face, one of the, my biggest fears was her passing away. She's almost 80. And one of my biggest fears back then was her passing away with me still using drugs and still going in and out of here and not being able to spend any clean time with her. And I've been able to do that for the last 17 years. Um, and every time we go out, we sit there and talk for hours. You know, when we first sit down, we're like, well, you know, we already, we already talked. What are we going to talk about? And we just talk for hours. And I see that smile on her face. And my family has given me keys to their, their home again. Um, these are some of the things that, that has just made getting clean and sober so much worth it. The relationships I've had with the two different women that I dated, um, I, I, I got to the point when I was using that I didn't think I deserved. I, I, there was no way I would be able to date a successful, beautiful, talented, funny, intelligent woman. Um, the relationships I had when I was using the, the friendships I had, they, they weren't friendships. That wasn't love or anything. That was just sick people using each other. Uh, now, back then, I had a full-time job, and I was driving a truck for a while, and then I lost the job too. I, I, I tested positive. I was a Teamster truck driver. Even though I got paid every th Wednesday or Thursday, back then it was like $600 a week, I would be broke the next day. I, I would see commercials on TV. I had no cable, no heat. I spent the, heat, the, the winter in Connecticut with no heat, and I'd get paid every week and I would spend the entire amount on crack every week. That's, and that's before I got across addicted to heroin. Now, I have, every day has possibilities. Uh, when I go for a walk around here, around this town, I go for a walk every single morning and there's just this exhilarating feeling. I mean, I have obligations to my family and obligations painting to people I'm you know, doing artwork for, my business, but I have, possibilities every day has so many you know I, I if I really wanted to I could go to Bradley International Airport and get on a plane and, and go to Florida today you know I could do that uh, I have the money you know back then I couldn't afford a Big Mac I couldn't afford a cheeseburger you know the possibilities today the trust my family the women I dated um, I, I'm so lucky their families that Took, that took me in and treated me like a son, uh, inviting me to Christmas dinner. It's things I, I never imagined I would have again. Um, discovering my artistic talent, I would have never discovered that. Um, the fact that people pay me hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars for, for something I create is a, an amazing feeling and I discovered that. I left here one time and I went to uh, St. Francis Rehab in Hartford and they had an art program and that's where I discovered that I, they had uh, watercolors and I discovered I, I had a talent for art or I still had a talent for art. I used to be a draftsman and when I came out I bought myself a three dollar canvas and some watercolors and uh, I was scared to even spend five dollars back then. I thought it was going to be a waste and I still had that first painting I did and now I'm selling paintings for it. I averaged my paintings average for four to six hundred dollars a piece and I have 
more business than I can handle lined up through Christmas. Um, it's such a blessing. Life is just amazing. The reason I wanted to stop by here too is when I was here, they had, they would have AA and NA groups come and talk to us up in the meeting room right over there. It's amazing that I'm still I'm sitting out here after 17 years, and it's just such I'm a completely different person in my life. I mean that was hell, and this is just a, a, a beautiful dream, a, a wonderful life. Um, they would have people come in and talk to us from NA and AA. We'd have a, a, a visiting NA group or a meeting. And I'm seriously, my, my goal is to come back and, and pay it forward here. I can't go up there right now. I, you know, I'm not going to be able to bring any cameras or phones or anything. It's not going to be that easy. Uh, I'm going to have to ask permission. I'll probably have to uh, put in a... a uh, a request to get up on that floor but I, I would like to talk to the people up there just like people used to come in and talk to me and tell them about the stuff I'm talking to you recovery is possible not only is recovery possible but it's a it's a life better than I could have ever imagined all right I hope somebody who needs to watch this is watching it you guys have a great Wednesday